In this video, we'll discuss about certain variations from Mendel's principles. There are the laws which are given by Mendel and these are the variations that we are talking of. So, variations from Mendel's principles. Before we take up these variations, we need to understand one more concept and for that we need a term called locus. Locus is the position of a gene on a chromosome. So if we draw this chromosome and say this is the location where the gene for height, that is tallness, is located. This chromosome will have its homologue with it. That means if we draw a homologous pair, then the other form of the gene is at the same locus. It could be a recessive gene, it could be another dominant gene, but when we are talking of these two, we are talking of one gene and two alleles. And here, if the interaction takes place between these two, then this interaction between the genes is known as <coughs> intra allelic or intragenic. This interaction, that means how these two alleles interact with each other to give that particular result or phenotype that is called intraallelic or intragenic. Similarly, if we draw another homologous chromosomes, this is another homologous chromosome pair, and we say here also there are genes, maybe for purple color. So here is for purple and this is for white. And we want to say that these genes interact with these genes. That means we are talking of genes which are located at different loci or different chromosomes or they could be on the same chromosomes also. If we draw two genes here, then these and these would be two genes located at different loci of the same chromosome pair. And if we compare these with these ones, then these are the genes which are located on different loci of different chromosomes. And if we are talking about interaction between these and these, then it is known as inter. This is intra. The second is intergenic or it is also known as non-allelic interaction. So when we talk of variations, we will take certain examples of intra-allelic and some examples of inter-allelic. Let us just write down few examples which we would be discussing under these variations. In this intra-allelic, we'll be talking about incomplete dominance. <clears throat> we'll be talking about incomplete dominance, we'll talk about co-dominance and in case of intergenic, we will take some examples, few of them are like polygenic inheritance and we will also take the example of epistasis. Dominant as well as recessive. These are few examples that would be we would be discussing under these headings and these are the variations from the normal Mendelian principle. So let us start with incomplete dominance which shows a slightly different type of ratios as compared to what was shown by Mendel in the law of dominance. So first we are talking of incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance means the dominant gene is not able to dominate the recessive gene completely. In case of Mendel's first law we said that if we start with pure line then in F1, it is only the dominant trait that expresses itself. In incomplete dominance, we have to also remember the examples. 
There are only three very, very important examples which show this incomplete dominance. One is Mirabilis Jalpa, that is our four o'clock plant. Another plant which shows this incomplete dominance is Antirinum. which is commonly known as dog flower or snap dragon. These are some common names of this plant. And the third example is of an animal, a bird, which is known as Andalusian fowl. These three show incomplete dominance. So let us talk about these two first because they exhibit pretty much same type of cross or behavior. In Mirabilis or Antirinum, there is a pure flower or color flower that is red. So this is a red flower. So plant having red flower when crossed with a plant having white flower. We are starting the Mendelian way. Mendel said that we want to start with pure white. So we are taking pure red and pure white. This becomes our parent generation. When they produce gametes, the gametes will be R containing, that is dominant gene containing and here they will be recessive gene containing. And if we plot the punit square, our punit square would have gamete from one plant written here on one side and the other side would have gamete from the other plant. After fertilization, all four will be heterozygous. So far, it is same as what was given by Mendel that here they are all heterozygous. But in case of law of dominance, if there is a dominant gene, it controls the trait. It expresses itself and doesn't let the recessive gene express itself. So if it was normal Mendelian inheritance, all these flowers would have been red colored flowers, but they are all pink colored flowers. That means red is not able to express, it, uh, 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 express itself completely. Or in other words, we can say, that red is not able to dominate the white gene completely. That's why it is called incomplete dominance. Now let us talk about the ratio in F2. So here all four are going to be pink and they are going to be heterozygous. If F1 members are self so after selfing, that means if we cross the members of the same generation, this becomes our F1. After selfing, we will get F2 ratio now. Here, if we plot a punit square, this plant will produce two types of gametes, one dominant gene containing, other recessive gene containing. This other plant will also produce a gamete with a dominant gene and other with a recessive gene. After fertilization, we will get one homozygous dominant, two are going to be heterozygous and this one is recessive. Now let us see what will be the color of these flowers. This will be red because it is pure. These two will be pink and this one again is going to be white. So here, and we are talking about the color. That means the ratio that we are talking about is phenotypic ratio or phenotype ratio. Phenotype ratio is one red, two pink and one white. Let us talk about the genotype ratio. The genotype ratio is This is homozygous dominant, only one. These two are heterozygous and this one is homozygous recessive. If you remember, in case of F2, 
of a monohydrid cross we got genotype ratio as 3 is to 1 or rather phenotype ratio as 3 is to 1 and genotype ratio as 1 is to 2 is to 1 here the phenotype as well as genotype both the ratios are same so this is also one clue which they give us while asking questions that in a cross if f2 ratio phenotype and genotype f2 ratios are same then which type of inheritance is it exhibiting then our answer is incomplete dominance in incomplete dominance in f2 phenotype and genotype ratios are same whereas in case of law of dominance phenotype ratio is 3 is to 1 and genotype ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 so in case of incomplete dominance in mirabilis or antirrhinum starting with pure line red crossed with white we get in f1 we get all pink instead of red reason is the gene which is responsible for producing red pigment is not able to dominate completely and the recessive gene also produces little white and that's why there's little blending of these two when f1 members are selfed in f2 the phenotype and genotype ratios are same now the third example in case of incomplete dominance <coughs> is of andalusian fowl Andalusian fowl, they also come in two colors. So here we are talking of Andalusian fowl. So they are of two types on the basis of their color. One is black and the other one is white. It is not exactly white, little with a grayish tinge, but there are distinct uh, color differences. One is black, other is white. So this is parent generation. In F1, this will produce black pigment producing gene and this one will have the white. So the gametes will have capital that is dominant genes here and here the gametes will have recessive genes. If these gametes are placed here in the punit square. The progeny would show heterozygous condition here, heterozygous here. All four are going to be heterozygous. If this was according to law of dominance, then the color of these four offsprings would have been black because this is the dominant trait. Whereas in case of Andalusian fowl, because it shows incomplete dominance, these four offsprings are blue. It is not exactly blue like sky blue, it is grayish blue, but they are blue. Now on selfing, if we want to get the F2 ratio, we'll cross these F1 members. This will produce two types of gametes, one containing dominant, other containing recessive, allele, same pair. And if we plot a punit square, capital that is dominant and recessive here, dominant and recessive here. So these offsprings, this one, first one will be homozygous dominant. This is heterozygous. This also is going to be heterozygous and this will be homozygous recessive. Now let us see what will be the color of these. This is a pure one. This is where we started from. So this is going to be like one of the parent, it's going to be black. The two heterozygous, they will show incomplete dominance and they will be blue. And this one, which is homozygous recessive will be white. So phenotype ratio, how they look is one black is to two blue is to one white and genotype ratio, one homozygous dominant, two heterozygous 
and one, this one, homozygous recessive. So here also, phenotype and genotype ratio in F2 is same. So in incomplete dominance, the phenotype genotype ratio in F2, that is second generation is exactly same. Three examples which we have to remember. Now there is an interesting thing behind this, uh, this example. Black colored fowl and white colored fowl, they are sold at a very cheaper price. Maybe some 100, 150 rupees a, a kilogram. And the blue varieties are considered as delicacies and they are sold at a very high price. So those uh, people who were involved into this poultry farming, they thought that this blue variety gives them more money. So they should have only blue colored birds in their poultry farm. And as they had no idea about this incomplete dominance, they killed the black and the white and they just kept the blue ones. And when they bred these blue varieties, only 50% of the offsprings were blue, 25% were black and 25% were white. If they had the clear idea of this incomplete dominance, they would always would have started with pure black and pure white. Here all four are blue. So because they were not biology students and they did not understand this overall type of inheritance, they from their general uh, awareness thought that if they bred blue with blue, they would get blue offsprings. But that is not the case because here the, the inheritance which is shown is a typical type of inheritance. That is one gene which is supposed, uh, supposedly a dominant gene does not dominate the recessive one completely. And that is why this inheritance is known as incomplete dominance which is a variation from Mendel's law of